Now what we're going to be doing is in our brushes, what I'm looking for is our user defined tinted brushes. You're going to notice that I already have them pretty much hanging out. Uh, if you have not created your brushes and or your cartoon brushes, just be aware that there is a tutorial on how to do that. Uh, the tinted brushes, there is a three minute video, very, very quick on just dragging it over. The only major difference when we are creating our art brush is we are changing the colorization mode. And then when we're changing it to a tint, doing the actual brushes, that demonstration, very, very quick as well. I think it's under five minutes. All of these shapes are already built for you, so all you have to do is drag them into your brush menu, pick out the directions on the two that have directions, and then uh, you can either change it to colorization tint and or uh, do it that way. And why we're doing it separately is so we can save a brush library, so these are always hanging out for you. And then you only have to do it once. If you forget to do the uh, save brush library and then sometimes they are just deleted and they're only hanging out on the project that you're actually working on. All right, so we are gonna do our tinted brushes today. I'm just gonna have these out so you guys can see what's up. And all we have to do is we are going to be clicking and what we are peeking for Maybe we'll drop that one down. All right, so this is what we're gonna look to do. Anytime you see a line that is floating out into the body or out floating in space, that is a good signal that you want it to be tapered. So if I'm looking at this one, I'm gonna say, well, I want it tapered up at the top, but since it's connecting down at the bottom, I want to grab the brush that's going to be tapered up at the top and then it's going to get nice and fat down at the bottom. So this one, I want this little cheek to be peeking out. Maybe I want this one to tuck behind the lip. And then I can just add those up. Typically my normal process is to just apply the brushes first. Then we can come back in and then worry about how thick we want everything. All right, so this is gonna be tapered. These are actually gonna turn to white probably at some point. And I do want those to be pretty thick. Good. I'm just kind of modifying it a tiny bit. And whenever we're doing a scissor tool, I can always come back. I can delete it. Notice that it is still trying to apply the brush to our little bits and pieces. So if I want to change where the thickness is on any of these lines, you can do that just with the scissor tool. Maybe I want this one to pop back out. Okay, black arrow. So I'm looking at the inside of the mouth, taper. So I want it to be fat by the cheek there. No matter what, it's always the opposite whenever we're doing the thicknesses. And let's just zoom in. Whenever we're doing our brushes, I usually simplify the process a tiny bit. And reasons why we're able to do that is these little edges aren't gonna line up perfectly whenever we do the brushes. So you're gonna notice that there's always this overlap and that's so when we come back later, we're gonna expand them and then we're gonna come in with the eraser tool and we're gonna get rid of all that. Good. Now I want it to be fat down at the bottom. This one, I want it to be fat up at the top. So what I'm looking for is there's a tiny bit of this edge. Now just be aware that we are gonna be filling this part that top part in. So there's sometimes where it's not gonna be nearly as big of a deal, but sometimes I just like getting you guys in the good habits. Good, this one's just gonna be dark, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of a thickness here. Same thing on here, a little bit of a thickness. 
I mean, this whole thing is pretty much going to get deleted. So if you said, hey, I want to just get rid of this whole bottom half, that would be acceptable. I want it to be fat up by the cheek here. This one's going to have tapers. And there will be a slight color change whenever you're doing the tinted brushes. And that is not a big deal at all. I'm just going to thicken that one up. This is going to just get highlighted out. So if this is all black, it's just going to flow right into that line. So that's not that big of a deal. I want that one to be tapered down by the nose. I'm going to leave these alone. We'll come back to them. This is just going to get more than likely filled in black. So this is this line to this line. That's just going to flow together. Let's just pop that one up. Again, that one's going to turn into a white line. Let's grab these two. So this is where we're going to come back and just see how that outside shape is. Okay. I'm just going to pull that over. And I'll explain what I'm doing here. Is this edge is going to flow up into our little hair pieces. And we are going to get rid of some of this. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. So I'm just looking for this outside edge. And then I'm also looking at how this is playing out with each other. Looking good. Let's do a similar process over here. Thick, thick. Let's make that one fatter. going to do right there. We we'll probably will modify that a little bit once we expand them. And my thought process right now, just so you can tell, is we're probably going to turn this all black and then just have our little white. So it's all the stuff in the middle is not going to matter as much. All right. Since this is going to stay white, I do want this to have our taper. That looks good. Let's go control zero and now what we are going to do is since we have most of the strokes where we want them what we're basically looking for is how thick do we want everything and this is going to go way personal preference some people really like big fat strokes some people don't like any at all so it really just depends on what your normal preference is i'm just kind of peeking and the other little tiny bit you can be looking for is any of these little tapers, how far out do you want these tapers to go? Is another little thing that you should be kind of looking at at this point in time. So while things are still in stroke form, I can modify them. I say we look pretty good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go one, two, three, and I think that's it with black. Those are going to all go to a lighter gray. More than likely they're going to go white. 
and all I'm really doing is I want them to be a color that you guys can see. So I'm not going to be too concerned about the colors quite yet. I think I want this one to get way fat. I think this one's going to get fatter as well. Uh, 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 uh. Decisions, decisions. I'm just modifying some of these points once I've added the thickness to them. Choo, choo, choo. All right, looks good. So I'm gonna go file save. Let's duplicate out our lines. I'm gonna lock out that one. So this is where we're going to start expanding. We are also gonna be using our eraser tool. So this is going to be, we've already got our brushes. And I'm just gonna say expanded on this one. So we're gonna select everything and I'm just double checking that that makes sense when we do that. All right, I'm okay with that. So let's go object expand. We're more than likely gonna have to do it twice, but object expand. More than likely you want this pop-up. That's kind of the good signal that everything is getting expanded. And let's just really quickly go through this process and I might just speed it up. I don't need this layer anymore. Is what we are looking to do is I'm going to select the line and all I'm looking to do is select it, shift E. You will notice that our nice little eraser tool is popping up. And now we are just getting rid of any of the overlapping. So things just to pay attention to is if I select the line and erase it looks like I'm deleting a lot of things and it's only going to delete what I want on the line itself. If I wanted to change the size of the brush this is just in the brackets by the way. All right shift E and I just want to get rid of that little nugget right there. Good I'm going to grab this. I don't want this going through the ear. So any little bit that you think, hey, I can clean that up, zoom in. My recommendation is always just zooming in once you have an idea of what you want in front and or behind. So that should be okay. Let's grab this little nugget. Shift E. And again, why we do this is this little edge is quite challenging to line up perfectly without having, having to uh, redo all of your lines. So if you've ever tried it, you'll find out very quickly that you're gonna be using the A and Shift C almost all again. So it just kind of defeats the purpose of trying to make our lives easy with it. So this way, I think it's one, very brain dead. You don't have to be thinking too much. I just have to click on something. Shift E, get rid of my overlapping. The lines that we originally had stay where they're supposed to. And I just have to get rid of any of this little overlapping. Now we are gonna probably come back and do a little bit more. Let's just zoom in, see if I'm missing anything. Let's get that little corner. And I do recommend zooming in. You will see any overlaps and you are also looking to make sure that any of our little corners aren't just peeking out. So that'll kind of mess up some of your lines a little bit. That's gonna get filled in. All right, I say he is adorable. Cuteness overload again, huh? All right, that is where we want it. I'm gonna grab these two grays. Let's come over to Pathfinder. I'm just gonna unite those. All right, you ready? Let's just make our lives easy. Just so we don't have any weird 
Pathfinder type stuff happening later. I'm just gonna take this one. Since I want that line, I'm gonna go Control C, Control F. That's just edit, copy, paste in front. And I'm just going to subtract front. So that edge, notice, is nice and clean right there. Major thing is if you lost this line, just make sure that you have copied and pasted in front. So I'm gonna grab the same thing over here. Control C, Control F. If you're on a Mac, that is Command, by the way. Shift, minus front. And we just made that in line nice and clean. Okay, good, good, good. If you, for any reason you thought, hey, I wanted to modify any of this, we still have the stroke one. So I don't think it's that big of a deal on this. So let's just grab it all. And actually, let's do this. Let's grab all of our black. Grab our black. We are going to unite them all. That looks good, so we won't get any weird effects whenever we do the next step. I'm gonna grab everything. We're gonna drop down to live paint, make. Click on K, that is the live paint bucket. And all we're really looking to do is start filling in our little black shapes. Okay. Other little thing I do want to do, let's just do a little, notice I'm just doing really simple colors right now. That is fine. Any last little thing would be, I do want to fill in my white. So I'm going to just do a little bit of an off white. So I can see if I missed anything. We can probably figure out the eyeballs, by the way. White, white, good. Everything looks colored to me. So I'm gonna go object expand, hit okay. We are gonna ungroup one, two, three times. Usually it's three times. I have absolutely no idea why it takes that many times. And what we're looking for is that we can grab each one. So there's a couple different things you guys could do. Number one, if I wanted to change any of these colors up, this would be a good time. So since I just filled in all of this black, I'm gonna come back over to my magic wand. I'm gonna grab all of the black and I'm just going to unite those. If for some odd reason you try to unite and lots of things filled in, just double check that you have ungrouped enough times. Just be aware that we did do this on a separate layer, separate layer. We're gonna go object. We're gonna go down to path. It has to be selected. No, we can do it. Path, offset path. Now I'm gonna go preview. Let's go 08 and just see what that looks like. Okay, I'm gonna say okay. And all it's doing is extending things out. So let's bring back in our panda here. And let's just say I want that to be kind of that off-white. So go gray, gray. I say we do, uh, I'm actually okay with that, guys. I say, for the sake of argument, and for the sake of a beginning tutorial, let's call that one a day. Done and done. So right now, save check. Man, super cute, right? So here we go. We do a bunch of Illustrator tutorials. I am gonna be adding some beginner tutorials this school year, especially as we are moving into Illustrator in the classes and they are looking for some easy ones to follow. We are gonna be doing a couple of those. Uh, I do have a lot more advanced ones as well. So as you are getting more comfortable with the pen tool, we're looking for some different coloring techniques. Definitely look through the playlists for that as well. Uh, I'm gonna be adding some how to draw cartoons as well as whiteboard animation that will actually take our vector work and then actually animate it out. So that is a very, very cool little way of adding some extra income and freelance work to your vector work, especially if you're getting good at drawing cartoons and using Illustrator. I think it's a great little next step for you. And we can also monetize it by building up some nice little libraries and you can just sell those libraries. So uh, with that said, thanks for hanging out. We got a nice little cuteness panda overload today. 
Uh, if you are liking the channel, definitely subscribe. I do read all of the comments, so thank you for uh, writing those down and giving me some nice feedback. And then also I want to just thank everyone for always trying to stay positive since my students do read those. So other than that, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you guys on the next tutorial.